If you want to talk about who's the best Jedi, there are a bunch of answers you could get into. You could point to Master Yoda, Mace Windu, Luke Skywalker, Revan when he was on the light side, Mitra Surik, Kip Durin, or any number of other candidates. But there's one clear answer that stands head and shoulders above the rest. Hello there. General Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Okay, so maybe it's not a settled debate, but today I wanted to talk about what actually makes Obi-Wan at least be within that discussion and use him as a kind of case study to see exactly what makes for a powerful Jedi in the first place. Looking at Obi-Wan's accomplishments can help highlight just how powerful he really was, though it doesn't tell the whole story. Sith Lords were a particular specialty of his, having defeated Darth Maul multiple times depending on the continuity, and while he did lose twice to Count Dooku in a lightsaber battle, he managed to beat Darth Vader one on one. Additionally, he was the Jedi to finally bring down General Grievous. As Yoda said though, wars not make one great, and to really describe what made Obi-Wan so special, we have to look somewhat beyond just his skills in combat. The reasons he was sent by the Jedi Council to fight Grievous do shed some light on Kenobi's qualities as a Jedi, and his selection shows just how much respect the rest of the Council had for him. In the Revenge of the Sith novelization, the Council was discussing who should pursue Grievous, and they decided to send their most cunning and insightful and tenacious master after Grievous, which everyone but Kenobi himself immediately realized obviously meant him. The Episode 3 novelization actually covers a lot of what we're going to talk about today and is a good example of how a lot of this works, though it's stuff that kind of comes in from all elements of the expanded universe. In my opinion, the crucial part of what makes certain Jedi so powerful, including and especially Obi-Wan Kenobi, has to do with their relationship to the Force, especially as compared to the Sith. In many places, the Force gets described as similar to a flowing river. Different pieces of media approach it slightly differently, ascribing a sense of purpose or intelligence to it, but that's not universal. The will of the Force doesn't necessarily need to be the result of a guiding intelligence, it's instead the result of where the metaphorical river naturally flows. The Jedi and the light side generally are often described as essentially allowing the Force and that flow to act through themselves. The dark side, conversely, has an element of bending that river to its own purposes. There's something of a spectrum here and a lot of variation on how that gets worked out exactly and what the specifics are, but the basic premise there and the basic metaphor that's used there tend to be used pretty consistently and explicitly across a lot of the expanded universe and the implications of it can be seen through the movies as well. Jason Solo states it pretty explicitly in Dark Nest, though that has a bit of a caveat since the view of the force that Jason has in the Order as a whole, kind of, at that point, is a little bit weird. And it's one of the key plot points of the Dark Nest Crisis and then kind of legacy of the Force that that is what the Order is struggling to figure out. But the same philosophy or metaphor gets outlined by Mace Windu in Shatterpoint, and Obi-Wan even relates it as being described similarly to him by Qui-Gon Jinn when he's explaining it to Padme in the Revenge of the Sith novelization, saying, quote, We speak of the will of the Force as someone ignorant of gravity might say it's the will of a river to flow to the ocean. It's a metaphor that describes our own ignorance. The simple truth is that we do not truly know what the will of the Force may be. We can never know. It's so far beyond our limited understanding that we can only surrender to its mystery. It follows then that aside from just pure affinity for the Force, the more a Jedi is willing and able to give themselves over to be guided by the way the Force is flowing, the more they'll be able to accomplish. Whether the thing they are going to accomplish is what they had originally set out to do, or if it's another quote unquote goal that the Force has. Strength within the Force, or midichlorian count or whatever else, would likely relate to that ability, but it's probably less important than it is for, say, a dark side user, acting entirely through their own purposes and intentions, counter to what the flow would naturally be. Obi-Wan is stated and shown to be at least among the best at following this flow, especially in the Revenge of the Sith novelization. There are several chapters which focus on highlighting the differences between Anakin and Obi-Wan, showing them to be drawing their considerable respective power in different ways. For Anakin, his personal goals, passions, and just raw talent are often highlighted. But in Obi-Wan's scenes, especially in his duel with Grievous, the focus is on how he's willing to let himself go and let all of his attachments go. In this way, while Obi-Wan may not be able to guarantee his own success in whatever he may decide his goals are, his power is essentially proportional to how it matches up with the will of the Force, allowing him to overcome opponents who may be more traditionally thought of as stronger, like Anakin. As Dooku more derisively puts it when he thinks he's beating both Obi-Wan and Anakin aboard the Invisible Hand, quote, They allowed the Force to direct them. Dooku directed the Force. Obi-Wan's chapters show a more direct relationship with him following what the Force is telling him to do. 
Throughout Revenge of the Sith especially, he's willing to give up his wants, his needs, and his plans for whatever the Force ends up doing through him, and he's willing to sacrifice his own life if that ends up being what happens, which is heavily contrasted with how Anakin operated, or Palpatine. Palpatine saying explicitly that he doesn't really believe in a will of the Force. You can say a lot of the same things about some of the other council members like Mace Windu and Yoda, but one thing that I think puts Obi-Wan kind of above Mace and Yoda, even if it's not in like outright power, is that he's still able to understand the needs, goals, and motivations of those around him. He manages to live up to the kind of Jedi ideal without being the same kind of detached monk image that a lot of the galaxy ends up with of the Jedi as the Clone Wars end, where some of them would just try to console someone else who had something terrible happen to them by saying, oh, it's the will of the Force, Obi-Wan is kind of able to understand why other people would not be acting in the same way and with the same motivations or understanding of the Force that the Jedi might have. In particular, this allows him to understand how Anakin would act in a way that was incomprehensible to Yoda and Mace Windu. Had it not been for some of the actions of the Council, then it's possible that if Obi-Wan had been able to deal with Anakin on his own terms, there might have been a very different outcome to Anakin's turn to the dark side. One of the main storylines that occurs with Luke's new Jedi Order is how the Jedi Order should relate to the Galactic Alliance or the New Republic, and what their relationship or responsibility is to the inhabitants of the galaxy. It's something that they struggle with and kind of go back and forth on a lot of different times in a lot of different ways, sometimes even involving the use of the dark side within the Jedi Order, and it seems like something that Obi-Wan has figured out even better than they do later on. That's more just my opinion though. So that's going to do it for our look at the core of a Jedi strength. So who do you think is the most powerful Jedi, whether that's in Legends or Canon, and whether the things I've talked about today factor into that decision making at all? Let me know in the comments. Leave any suggestions for future videos there as well. If you've enjoyed, consider leaving a like or subscribing for more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.